Hi, my name's Craig. I'm the technical manager here at QNAP UK. And today I wanted to cover off our QSync um, software. So this is software that's very much similar to uh, Dropbox, if anybody's ever used Dropbox and is familiar with that. Um, the big difference here is obviously there is no subscription charges. It's completely free software if you have a QNAP. Um, and the QNAP will be the central uh, store of all the data rather than a, a cloud server where you may not know where the data is held. Um, so the QSync app is made up of quite a few components. So the first one I've got on screen here, which is uh, QSync Central. Um, I'm running this on a uh, TVS-H1288X. Uh, I've just got a basic setup here. The, the setup really doesn't matter too much when it comes to QSync. Uh, every NAS we make can, can support QSync. Um, so the main component that's on screen is QSync Central. So this is the server-side um, uh, management interface. Uh, for where you set uh, who can access QSync, uh, what what's shared with QSync, what are the rules, um, changing uh, different items, we'll go through all the different options, and you get a summary of exactly who's using it, um, how many devices is each user logged into, um, and whether or not you want things like uh, version control, um, or to do any share links of any files that people may have so that you can um, give the link to somebody else so that it can transfer from the NAS. Um, rather than transferring directly from your own computer. Um, so QSync Central here is the main screen. On the overview here, we get a little bit of a status uh, information. So I've got it enabled. It is literally a case of flicking the switch to enabled. Uh, QSync Central is installed on every NAS by default, um, usually with an icon on the desktop. If it's not on the desktop, you can usually come into the, uh, the three bar menu here at the top left, and QSync Central will be there as well. Um, so here on the summary screen, I've got a, a basic bit of information. I, I don't have this NAS doing too much, so we haven't got much uh, capacity used on CPU or memory usage. Um, and the space used right now is quite low because I haven't got that much data on it. It's just for a demo. Over here, we can see I've got quite a few online users. And if you hover over each one, you can see some information about them. So there's two people logged in as Craig as myself. Um, I've got a user called Ian, and I've got uh, four separate Ubuntu virtual machines running just to illustrate that we can have a lot of users connected to it at once. So right now we see we've got all eight devices. If you want more information on any of these options, you can just click the details tab, which just takes you to a side menu over here. So online users is going to take us to the online users menu. So if I click that, we can see here some basic bit of information um, about where they're coming from. So if they were coming from um, a public location, so they were working from home, let's say, and the NAS is at the office, you would see that they're connected with their, their one IP address instead of the, uh, the source IP being a LAN IP address that I've got set here. And here is where you can uh, grant or deny access to any user. So if you don't want the user to have access to um, uh, QSync, uh, you can disable that here as well. Um, this is just the online users tab. We have an all users list here, so it shows you everybody. Um, so the admin user is currently not signed in with a device uh, for QSync, so we can see them there. If we go down to devices, this is where we can see a bit more information. So I can see with all these different options here, uh, we've got um, a few Ubuntu virtual machines, a um, couple of Windows 10 machines, my MacBook Pro, uh, as we scroll down another Windows 10 and quite a few more Ubuntu machines. So they're all logged in. And it gives me some basic information here about the version of QSync that each client is running as well. Um, the reason that all the version numbers are slightly different here is the version numbering within the uh, Mac ecosystem is different from Windows, is different from, from Ubuntu as well. So we've got a lot of different um, version numbers there. Now you get some basic information over here, so you can edit the settings for uh, the QSync utility here. Um, so this is saying it does not support this feature, so only some will allow you to edit the settings directly. So for example, with Windows, you can change the policy of the local QSync client directly from uh, the main screen. But for the Linux one, you will get the error that you cannot do that. And for the Mac one, you can work exactly the same as Windows. So if you're a, a company with... Um, lots of Linux machines, uh, you will have to edit their policies uh, locally for the client software. Um, now, just to go over some management options, we do have some options where you can either uh, customize uh, the user settings centrally, or you can let each user be in charge of their own settings. Uh, by default, the users can change their own settings. 
If we go into edit these settings, um, you can set things like don't remove any of the files on the NAS during a synchronization. And you've also got a policy which would be good for things like conflicts. Um, this is especially useful if you have a team folder set up where multiple people can access the same data. Uh, you can have the, the conflict options set here. And we've got quite a few options so that you can choose which way to deal with them. Uh, and you can also ignore certain files as well down here at the bottom if you want to. Uh, if you go back to the main management settings, you can do central configuration. The settings are the same within here. Um, it's just now um, only the admin can change it from the NAS web interface. Uh, the users cannot change uh, the QSync settings directly, and you can also set a management password for that as well. As we go down the list, we can see different shared folders that are on the NAS and whether or not we want to grant access to these out to the different users that are using QSync. So you can segment uh, the data used by QSync to being just QSync, or you can also open it up uh, to some generic shares, to generic folders on the NAS uh, where they can also be accessed with QSync and you can enable those here as well. If I go into the team folder section, uh, this is where you can create a team folder within QSync. So you can create a folder and then share that team folder out with anybody that you want. And you've also got the options here to pick and choose who's allowed uh, to do this. And you can also see who's accepted the invitation uh, to, to view these files or not. So we can see here on the um, uh, Ubuntu 3 machine, um, it's still waiting. So I'll go show you what that looks like. So if we go across and we'll go look at the Ubuntu 3 machine, which is over here. We've got a uh, team folder invitation here. So we'll click QSync that's running at the top, which has got an information dialog next to it. And we'll open up the main software. So here we can see we've got a little notification icon up here that's letting me know that there is a new sharing request. So I can choose to tick this or not. If I go into the local QSync folder, which is very much like the, the Dropbox favorite folder would be created. Right now it's empty. I've got nothing shared here, but as soon as I tick this box here and get to choose what it's called and I'm going to accept that. So now I've joined the team folder. I'm going to get a few pop-ups here because there are some files in there. So it's going to synchronize those files in. So that file has now been added to my folder so I can close out of QSync. I can see that I now have the team folder that was shared to me that, that I was invited to be a part of. And inside there, um, I've just got a, a QNAP firmware file that's, that's listed there. Um, so that's very easy to set up. And anytime you add files into um, the team folder, everybody will get a copy of that file. Um, so here, even on the uh, the Mac that I'm running here, if I go into my QSync folder, we can see here that I've got um, all the different uh, things. I've got my local ones, which is my local files, but I've also got um, the team folder, which is the same that I was seeing over there um, in the Ubuntu virtual machine that I've got running as well. Now, if I ever wanted to share anything else to the team folder, I can come in here and Let's say I want to copy our wireless routers firmware so I can copy that one, go back up a level, put it in this team folder, and then I can paste this item here as well. So now there's going to be a, an extra copy of that file. Um, but now because I put that in the team folder, we can see automatically in the background on the virtual machine uh, that that, uh, that horror 301 w file has also synced across. And that will have synced to absolutely everybody that's part of that team folder. They all got a copy of it. So that's very useful if you're an organi organization that maybe um, has some shared resources, you know, contact lists or, or certain files that everybody needs access to, everybody needs to edit. Um, and the best thing is everybody gets local access to it because the files synchronize locally to their machine. They can work on it very fast, uh, very quick with the local speed access. And as soon as they click save, the QSync client is going to notice there's a change to that file and it's going to sync it back to the NAS and the NAS will then sync it to everybody else that has permission to look at that file. So it's completely automatic in the way it works so long as you've got the QSync client running. Uh, we do also support it on mobile devices as well. So if you have um, uh, things like uh, iOS or Android devices, you can use our QFile application on there. Um, and you can access all the QSync data uh, that way. And there's also options to do things like automatic photo uploads from your, uh, from your camera roll or something like that on your mobile device if you want it to automatically sync those files in. Uh, so that's the, the, the basic setup of how um, the software works. And also at any time, if you wanted to, here within the Ubuntu machine, I can create a new folder. So I can say uh, I want to create a new folder for the... Um, accounting team, let's say. So let's say accounting, we'll create that folder. Um, and what I can do with this is I can right click on it and I can see the QSync folder and I can go share this folder as a team folder. So when I do that, I get some options of who I want to share that to. 
Um, so let's say I want to share that with the Ubuntu One user, so I can tick that. So I'm going to have an accounting folder that only the Ubuntu 3 virtual machine and the Ubuntu One folder is sharing. So I can click apply on that one. It's going to inform the NAS, that's going to send an invitation out to the Ubuntu One machine. So if I go back to the um, Ubuntu One virtual machine, which is over here, uh, if I go up here, there's another information. I can see that there's an invitation been added. So if I go back into the uh, main interface, I can accept that. And I can see that accounting Ubuntu 3 has shared the accounting folder with me. So I can tick that one, accept it. And now I'm going to also have a copy over here on this machine that both myself and the user called Ubuntu 3 are sharing and collaborating on. So it's very flexible for you to be able to share things around, move data around between each person. But the best thing is you get offline access as well. Um, so maybe not in this day and age, but if you are off traveling on a, uh, a plane, you can have all the files locally stored on your laptop so that you can work on them. As soon as you get connected at the other end, it's going to sync up all the changes you made uh, back up to the NAS and to everybody else that needs to see them as well. Uh, so that's the uh, the basic setup of how um, the sharing's working, uh, how QSync's functioning. It's not strictly a, uh, a backup software, but you can use things uh, like version control. So down here, we do have an option to enable version control um, for all users or just specific, specific uh, folders, specific uh, users on the device. Uh, you've also got an advanced option here where you can select how many numbers of uh, copies of the file that you want to have. Um, and how much disk space is used by that specific feature. So if you wanted to apply that, um, let me click yes. So this is now going to turn on version control. So if you were editing an Excel spreadsheet um, twice a day for a week, then you're gonna have quite a few copies of it. And you can roll back at any point to any version um, that was previously saved. And it doesn't matter if it's in a shared folder, if it's in a team folder um, with lots of people collaborating, you'll get lots of different restore points if you've set it to as well. Um, so it's very, very easy to set up, very easy to use. And you've also got things called share links. So if you wanted to share a link to a file to anybody, um, so if we were to go back to uh, one of the Ubuntu machines here, so if we were to go into the QSync folder here, and we'll go look in that team folder that we've got created, if I wanted to share one of these files, I can right click on the file, come down to the QSync menu and go share the link. So what that's going to do is it's going to create a share link just like it would with Dropbox, uh, so it's going to give you a link so that you can choose uh, who to send it to. You can email that link off to somebody if you want to, um, if you've got the email configuration set up, and then they're going to be able to get a link to the file. Because I've not set up uh, MyQNet Cloud on this NAS for remote access, the link here is just a LAN IP address. But if you've set up MyQNet Cloud, the link would contain things like uh, the MyQNet Cloud name that you've set, so that it is accessible even for um, uh, users or, or customers or, or any, anyone else that's outside um, of your local network so that you can give them the exact file um, or you can just uh, type in the email address and the, uh, the QNAP will send that file to them directly. And there's a few different settings here where you can change the link. Um, because uh, I've got an external IP there, I could change it to my external IP link. I can choose whether I want it to be um, an SSL for a bit more security. And you can also set an exp expiration date um, on that link as well. So I can say valid until, um, let's have a look. Let's turn Put it up one day so i'm going to say that's valid until tomorrow so i'll change that from february so that's going to be valid until tomorrow and you can even set a password so let's say password of testing and then we're going to click apply on that one uh, so now i've created a share link to that um, so that's set, uh, set, set up so if i go back to my main uh, interface here i should see that we've now got a shared file links and come over here and if we go down and select that we're going to go look at the ubuntu one user uh, we'll see that the Ubuntu One user has got a share link that's been set up. Uh, so there's the share link, and I can copy that link from here as well if I want to, um, so that I could give uh, access to anybody directly from here if I wanted to as well. But it's giving me the information that there's an expiry set um, and everything else. It's not going to give me the password here, so I'd have to know what the password was set. Uh, I'll go ask the Ubuntu One user what password they set before I gave that link out. Uh, but that's given you a nice overview, central management um, of, of, of the whole setup there as well. Okay, so hopefully everybody's uh, able to understand exactly how the, the QSync software has worked. Um, we, we often describe it as a Dropbox-like service, but with uh, no subscription charges, and the uh, central server for it is effectively your QNAP. Um, if your QNAP has a lot of capacity in it, um, you're getting a lot of capacity there for a Dropbox-like service for absolutely uh, no monthly fee. 
So now we're back to the overview pane and what I'll do now is I'll just show you that the um, QSync software looks exactly the same on all platforms. So I've shown you the uh, the Mac software now, I've shown you the uh, Linux Ubuntu version um, and now we'll switch across to a Windows 10 uh, virtual machine here just to show you I've got QSync um, installed. Uh, so that runs down here in the uh, in the taskbar so you can click on that get the pop-up get some status or you can go straight to the main page and you can see how this functions so if you ever wanted to share out uh, any any files or access anything your notifications pop up at the top left and um, if we go to this pc option here you can see that we've also got a qsync favorite folder set so if anybody was wanting to share a folder or anything here you can do that so you can go right click share folder so you can create a folder and then you can right click on that uh, and go to uh, any different options. You can move it to a QSync folder. You can copy it to a specific place. Um, you can share the files out in exactly the same way. So if you wanted to, but this is ultimately the exact same software experience across all platforms. Uh, you can test the connection. You can see how quick the speeds are going. So between um, the device and the NAS. So if you wanted to check uh, just as performance as good as you expect, uh, this is quite useful, especially if you're on a remote connection as well. So there's a lot of different options that you can do here, but the, the software is absolutely the same, whether you're on Windows, whether you're on um, Ubuntu for Linux, um, or whether you're using the Mac software. And the experience does look a little bit different in the Q file application, because obviously mobile devices uh, cannot sync down um, all the data for offline access you have to download the items, but you can access anything in an online situation through the mobile app. Um, so hopefully uh, everybody found that quite useful. Um, if there's any questions or you need to see um, uh, anything else, any other video suggestions, please let us know. Uh, we're quite quick at responding to the comments as well, so please leave any, any questions or comments that, uh, that you have in the, in the comment box below. Okay, thanks a lot for watching.